is with your lanes to see and hate them or love them for the same reason. Can't leave it, the game needs them. Plus, the people need someone to believe in. So, in God's son, we trust, cause they know I'm gonna give them what they want. They're looking for a Hey yo, what's up, man? It's your boy Hip Hip Hop Gamer. I'm chilling with a future legend in our industry, man. Bullet Storm is incredible. I'm telling you. But Tanya, Jessen, or Yesen? Uh, well, if we were in Poland, it would be Yesen. All right, cool. <laughs> Yesen. I have to give her the belt. You want to know why? Here you go, baby. Now. Yeah, you got to put it on your shoulder, baby. I had to give her the belt because, honestly, I think that Tanya is the new shining star representing the game industry. So, Mark Rain, Cliffy B, I think you just been dethroned because Tanya is the number one joint right now, son. Bullet Storm is crazy. Shout out to them. I just had to do that. But now, let me ask you a question. Like, seriously. Like, Bullet Storm, the whole concept is very unique. So, with the whip and, like, the, the combination system, how did you guys put all this together? So, it's actually piece by piece, really. Like, when we first started making the game, what we knew is we needed something fresh, fun, like, just unique, over the top. And so, when we started making the weapons, then it was like, oh, man, you can do some crazy shit with the weapons. Like, with the flail gun, you know, wrap guys around their legs. And now they're like portable, you know, grenades, right? Well, we wanted to reward players when they came up with cool ways to like, you know, deal with those enemies. And so PCF, People Can Fly, they first put in a kick. And it was like, well, now I just want to kick everything, right? Like, and then it was like, well, we've got this flail gun and we've got this kicking system. Well, we want to let people know when they're doing this awesome, you know, besides the fact that it's just awesome, like we want to reward people for it, right? And so we started just coming up, like every day people were coming up with new ideas of like, oh well, what if you like wrap the grenades around a trash can and then kick the trash can at the dudes, or what do you kick the dudes over ledges, or what if we had, you know, rebar all over the levels and you could impale the dudes all over the rebar, or, I mean, it was just like this, and then it was like, well, what about when the enemies are far away and you can't kick them because kicking is awesome, right? Yeah. Then came the leash, it was like, oh, wow. right, so we can grab them and get them closer to us so that we can kick them or shoot them or come up with creative ways to deal with them. All right, so look, I love the whole mechanics of the game, and I love the fact that there's a lot of dismemberment. You will get your head, your arms, your legs, like everything torn off. Now, one thing about this game that I saw from a gameplay standpoint is the fact that you can pull them close to the screen and the action is coming to you. Obviously, I think you know what I'm going to say. 3D. It looked as if I was looking at a 3D game without 3D glasses or 3D TV. It looked that amazing. It, have you guys thought about implementing 3D, considering that they just announced that 3D is enabled for the Unreal Engine? What's up? Well, so, we're not, we haven't quite figured it out <laughs> yet. But let me say, you know, it is, avail it is, it is by default in our engine. Okay. So, you know, I'm not going to, like, come up here and be like... You know. We got it. Here it is, here it is. But, yeah, it's definitely in the engine, and we definitely have played with it. Okay. So. All right, all right. So, hopefully, you know, we get that, because I was paying attention to that. Now, the next thing I want to say is this. Like, looking at that leash, yeah, looking at that leash... I had so many things going on in my mind, and one of the things going on in my mind was a PlayStation Move. It'd be amazing if you got the PlayStation Move and you could just boom and bring it close, and then you start shooting. It's like every it's just natural, you know. As soon as you see it happen, it feels like it would be better with the PlayStation Move in terms of just having that controller option, whether it's a patch or whatever. There's a lot of time because the game comes out in February. Have you guys thought about working with the PlayStation Move to bring that? type of, you know, immerse, e immersiveness to the Bulletstorm game? So, the thing about the thing about Bulletstorm that we knew we had to do really, really, really well is it needed to feel perfect because you're doing stuff that you, you don't do in other shooters, like yeah. kicking dudes, leashing dudes, you know, running around uh, around the levels and also yeah. having to, like, think about what you're going to do. Yeah. The controls needed to feel perfect, and so we spent a really long time just on that, just, like, getting that perfect, getting that perfect, and then, of course, Move was announced, yeah. and it's kind of like we made, we made a decision for the game, like, all right, should we have it be perfect on a controller or should we spend some of that time, you know, working on the move yeah, stuff? And okay. so it's like, I think you have an amazing idea and I'm so, I'm like going to go right back to the, the guys and be like, hmm, we should talk about some 
something, you know. Yeah, something, because but, I think it'll be good. But we wanted to make sure, you know, that the game was awesome. Like on the controller, that you could just pick it up. You know, you don't have any problems with learning curve. I don't, the worst thing that would ever happen is make a great game that people feel like it's too hard. You know, they can't, they can't learn how to... Or it's like, I don't know, when I run it feels laggy. Or like, the camera bounces too much. Or, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. So. Yo, you are an amazing producer. Like, like seriously, like, not nah, all jokes aside, female or not, like, your knowledge and passion for this title is incredible. I can't wait to see the next projects that you work on. Now, I want to say this. I, we was looking at the PC version of the game, and it looked, gr yo, I'm going to tell you right now, graphically, it's like I had a God of War 3 moment looking at the P looking at this um, first person shoot. Seriously, I had a God of War 3 moment. That's how graphically it looks. But it was on PC. Now... On what we saw, will we see that exact same quality on a PS3 and 360, or did you have something tuned up for the PC specifically for this event? So we do have some specific features for PC because, you know, definitely PC, being a PC gamer, you know, when you pay for that high-end graphics card, you know, you want you want to you want to know it, right? Yeah. And there's definitely some little things that we do, but the visual quality is just as high on the Xbox and the PS3. Wow. So like, that is you know, textures, it's like, for example, on PC you have a lot more space for textures, so you have a lot higher res textures. You know, can't, can't do that on a DVD disc, but it's not going to you know, degrade the quality of the game. But you will know if you're playing with an awesome PC, you'll, okay. yeah, you'll be able to see the difference. All right, now, the story of Bulletstorm, what was the inspiration, like, bringing this game to life? And also, is this a one-shot deal, or is this game a franchise that you guys are going to, you know, carry on, just like the Gears of War project? So, so as far as the franchise thing, it is up. It's up to you guys, right? Like, if you respond, buy it. She is beautiful. She's hot. If you don't buy this game, I'm coming to your crib, son. And you don't want to see me. I'm from Brooklyn. I appreciate that. That is awesome. You know, people buy the game. They love it. I certainly. I think that people will speak for themselves. You know, that'll speak for itself. Um, the other part of your question was about what? Again, sorry. The huh? right before the franchise question, you asked something else. Oh, oh, what did I ask? I forgot what I asked. That's how you know she looks so good that I forgot the other part of the question that I asked. Oh, yeah, the inspiration. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we always knew we wanted to do pulp sci-fi, like that, that feeling of just like visceral, over the top, like very colorful, in your face, saturated, you know, with everything. And we wanted that to be with the characters and with the story for sure. And so... We knew that from the very beginning, but we spent a really long time finding the perfect writer okay. that could write to that. And so we ended up finding Rick Remender, who wrote uh, for Fear Agent, which was exactly what we wanted for Bulletstorm. That was actually Adrian, the, the creative director oh, of People wow. Can Fly. He, he loved the series, and he was like, all right, so Rick has helped out writing for Dead Space, but he doesn't have a ton of you know video game writing experience. But he's like, this guy nailed the tone. We need to get him. And so we spent a little while, yeah, a little bit the negotiation and stuff, but got him on the project, and so he's the one who really like brought a lot of the life to the characters, all of those, the you know, the dialogue, all the one-liners and stuff. He wrote everything in the game. So, wow. so one last question, because I know we gotta wrap it up. My man Steve is like giving me the eye grill right now, so we gonna wrap it up. The one more question: Considering how crazy this game is, in the way the gameplay is, how different it is from every other FPS, what would you say is the best or the most amazing online mode that you're going to deliver to the fans considering the craziness of the gameplay. Did you say online mode? Yeah. Oh, I, don't, I don't recall us having talked about any online modes yet. Oh, damn it. See, I, you know what? I try, I try, I try hard, son. I try hard. We made, we, we made the single player campaign as a single player experience because we wanted to feel perfect. Like for you playing that game, we want you know that entire campaign to be tailored to that to that awesome gameplay, that experience, right? Okay. You will be playing with your friends online in a few different ways. <laughs> We're not talking about it yet. It's right. coming. It's coming. All right. Well, look. I gotta say, it's one love and God bless. I got Tanya. I thank you so much, sweetie. Absolutely. I thank you so much. You are the bomb. You know, I would let you have it, but then that means I have to come home with you, and your man might get mad. So I don't want. I don't want no problems. So one love and God bless. And any shout outs you want to make? Uh, hey, people can fly. I know you're in Warsaw working your asses off, and I'm in New York at a press event. I'm sorry, <laughs> but thank you. I yeah. Hip hip hop gamer show dot com and we out. They're out in Poland working really hard right now.
What we're showing here is our presentation from Gamescom. And this is a really cool part of the game where you get to meet up with this huge monster named Hecaton. And you actually get to fight her very shortly after this, this section. You're in the middle of downtown Elysium and the world is crumbling around you. And you have to get to this capsule. That's like your secondary mission. Because getting to this capsule means that you're going to get off the planet. And alongside you, you've got Trishka. And Trishka is, uh, you know, in Epic Games style, we like to make our female characters attractive, but not like over the top. And uh, she's definitely become a total badass. We've had to modify her quite a bit to uh, get her looking the way she looks now, but uh, we definitely like how she turned out. What is this shit? You went to town. Did you happen to pass through a cavern? Maybe piss something off? Now, the tail that you just saw there coming out of the ground, that was a result of a lot of collaboration between Adrian and Cliff. I'm trying to figure out the best way to tease Hecaton and introduce her as a proper, awesome boss monster. And so there's a lot of research done in, you know, monster movies and taking a look at the way that other games and movies introduce these kinds of enemies to create the right kind of introduction to a monster like this. Now, the monsters that you're seeing here are called burnouts, and these burnouts are actually fully mutated humans that have oozing sores, you know, and pus coming off of their body, and those are their only weak spots. So you have to target those or use the environment in order to kill them. Oh, great. So as you can see, we've got our four-barrel shotgun here, which it actually shoots air which creates an impulse that pushes the enemies away from you so that you can interact with them in the environment. And the funny story about that is that Cliff actually told me that he always wanted a four barrel shotgun in one of the Unreal games, Unreal 1 I believe, and uh, so he never got it and that was his uh, opportunity was in Bulletstorm. Yum yum! Blister juice! So as we come upon the reveal for our monster Hecaton, you actually see her multiple times throughout the game, and a little bit about her is that she's a mythical creature like the people who lived here before. They knew about this monster as a myth, but had never witnessed her in all her glory, and you actually do something that pisses her off, that makes her decide to come out of dormancy and to hunt you down. You will not piss it off everything you eat! Mostly, yeah. Thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed the demo.